Freedom of expression. And access to information give power to the people. We believe very strongly that self-regulation is the best way to go in as far as regulation or for the media. This is Face the Media, brought to you by the Media Institute of Southern Africa, Misa Zambia Chatter. Face the Media, giving you an opportunity to express your views on matters of national interest. Misa Zambia, promoting media freedom in Zambia. It's indeed a very good morning to those of you listening to Radio Phoenix on 89.5. Welcome to Face the Media. To present the program, my name's uh, Ruth Banda Dante. The topic of discussion today is online media publication and ethics. Internet has grown so big that community today is no longer dependent on traditional and mainstream media for news and information. The online media publications are seemingly preferred because they are timely, less costly, and carry out stories that cannot be carried out by media, by mainstream media due to censorship. However, it should be noted that people these days don't only widely use the internet, but are actually dependent on it for not only news, but for personal tasks and business. This has not been taken kindly by those that feel that the content in most online publications is defamatory. As a result, Media ethics have been questioned, while those suspected to be contributing to some of the wanted online media publications are hunted, questioned, and detained. While media bodies have been blamed for not condemning unethical reporting by some online media, the question is, where do we position online media publications? Should they be scrapped off? To assist you understand the operations and instances of online publications, I have with me in the studio Mr. Levi Kawato, from MISA, a MISA Regional Specialist and Media Freedom Monitoring and Research from the Secretariat window. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, thank you. I also have with me Mr. Keith Brian Abram, who is the founder of Zambia Network of Bloggers, ICT researcher and a cartoonist. Good morning and welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much. And I also have with me Mr. Kelly Skaunda, who is former Mr. Chairperson, a media consultant now, and a seasoned journalist. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Ruth. I deliberately invited Mr. Sandy Chanda, an executive director from Open Initiative Society, who will be here with us, I think, in, in, in no time. Maybe to, to, to start with, I think all of us are aware about concerns that have been raised on some of the content on online publications. But before we go to that, uh, MISA has been blamed for not condemning uh, as, as, as such. And so maybe to start with, I will ask uh, Mr. Kawatu to try to tell the listener what the role of MISA is. Thank you again, Ruth. Um, the Media Institute of Southern Africa is a media freedom advocacy um, organization. Our main business is to ensure that uh, there is uh, a, a safe and secure environment uh, for journalists to work in. It's also to promote media diversity, media independence, sustainability. We also promote access to information, all the things that govern uh, information processes in countries and also uh, all the processes that affect uh, freedom of expression. We do offer a comprehensive response uh, to that, and this we do throughout the region. Uh, this is the SADC region in 11 uh, countries. Okay, the audio listener, that is the role of uh, MISA. Uh, Mr. Kelly Skawunda, you are former chairperson of MISA Zambia. And MISA Zambia has been blamed for not uh, condemning uh, such instances of uh, an ethical, of, of an ethical uh, content in most of our online publications. Yet you are so quick to write uh, and, and uh, produce press releases when it comes to harassment and detention of journalists. Of us, like Levy has defined what the role of uh, MISA is, what uh, MISA then does is that uh, if any of those you know, principles that we stand to defend are abrogated or the practitioners, um, you know, media practitioners are affected in any other way, we feel aggrieved and we respond because that's our obligation. Now, what we, did, what we have done in this country 
is to be able to say, look, MISA cannot be a judge at the same time, you know, of the content of its members. So the decision was made in this country that we should form an independent body that should serve some kind of a court of honor in the name of MECOS, the media, you know, Council of Zambia or Media Ethics, Council of Zambia, MECOS. Now, MECOS is not a creation of MISA. MECOS is a creation of all media associations in this country so that aggrieved parties bring their complaints to this independent body for adjudication. So we as MISA react when we are aggrieved in those areas that form within the jurisdiction of our mandate. And if we are, if we are going to be uh, affected in this, in, this, in, in this arena, then we are going to react. Now what is happening in this country is that uh, you know, people are expecting us to, uh, you know, grieve on their behalf, so to say. If, for instance, uh, you know, Party A or, you know, or PF or Heritage Party or, you know, whichever individual is aggrieved by the content of uh, whichever newspaper, what we expect them to do is to express the fact that they are grieved. And the expression of grief is by them making use of makers. Now, the problem that we've had in this country is that, uh, you know, people are not make you, making use of uh, MECOS. In, at some point in the history of this country, just after MECOS was, uh, was, uh, was instituted, it had a number of cases that were coming before it. Now, that was an opportunity that this country was giving MECOS to develop, you know, a, a, a body of cases that uh, in turn was going to give it experience. Uh, and in turn was going to be an affirmation of confidence in this institution. But then there are others that uh, have been sabotaging the institution, calling it weak, you know, calling it uh, ineffectual. It only becomes weak and ineffectual when you're not using it. But when you do as a code of honor, then collectively will be developing this very important tool in our democratic, uh, you know, in our, in our, in our quest to develop these democratic institutions. Hey, Mr. Uh, is government aware about MECOS? Yes, the government is aware about MECOS. What I, what, what I just know is that uh, there are some, um, you know, government officials that have been cynical about it. They would rather use, you know, state institutions like uh, the police or investigative wings to deal with those, uh, you know, that, um, you know, they think are grieving them, other than using, uh, you know, MECOS. But, you know, MECOS is well known. It's, 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 it's been there for several years. I mean, we established it during MMD times. So we better make use of it if we are serious about promoting uh, um, self-regulation, uh, you know, in the media. Okay, uh, Mr. Kamot, uh, you are from the Secretariat. Now, this is uh, uh, the position that Mr. Zambia is, <coughs> is, is facing. Government feels it very, very unfair that... Uh, when there's some detention or questioning of any journalist found wanting, MISA is going to, to release a, a, a statement, whereas they've not been uh, condemning what has been uh, written by most online publications. Okay, I think uh, we continuously insist uh, that MISA is not uh, a regulatory authority. MISA is an advocacy um, organization. And MISA has been instrumental in the setting up of various uh, media councils within the region. Uh, most recently uh, in Zambia, and uh, referring to what my colleague uh, has just said, I think um, what has been previously uh, called MECOS has now come out as the, uh, Zambia media, as the Zambian Media Council, uh, ZAMEC, as it were. <clears throat> so we have always continuously uh, uh, brought ourselves to the fore and um, considered multi-stakeholder approaches to the issues of um, uh, governing or institute, instituting certain uh, principles that govern the conduct of journalists in all the countries in which we work in. And uh, we have not done this as uh, a single entity, but we have tried as much as we can to involve governments, other civil society actors, even the private sector, to so, sort of come up with a unit uh, that represents uh, our uh, aspirations and also captures the aspirations of citizens uh, in those respective countries in line and consistent with constitutional guarantees of freedom of expression. Thank you so much. Maybe at this time, let me welcome uh, Mr. 
Uh, Chanda, good morning and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning, thank you. Good morning, thank you, sir. Okay, we are looking at uh, online media publications and and ethics. Yes. I think you are aware of uh, one of the media online publications that has been blocked by the state. Yes. And uh, right now in the studio with me, Misa, because Misa has been blamed for not condemning, but quick to, condemn, to, to react when government uh, questions or detains uh, any journalist found uh, wanting. So this is our discussion okay. this morning. Right. Kiss, you are a blogger, you heard it for yourself. Misa is not a, a, a regulatory a, a body, have a role. Yes. And they have uh, their own role to play. And you are a, a, a blogger. Yeah. Why have we had? such content that today has led to, uh, to, to, the, to, to the blocking of one of our media online uh, publications? Well, I think uh, what the institutions are undergoing now is a short circuit because they don't really know how to deal with new media. I think uh, institutions in Zambia are not developing as fast as technologies and innovations in technology. I mean, all these institutions have been designed, you know, to ensure that uh, freedom of the press and journalism functions within an institutional framework and there is freedom of expression. But what the technology has done is that it's gone ahead of this and gone beyond just simply journalists and professional media practitioners, but also allowed ordinary citizens to publish their content and reach thousands of people. A, a wider population than even before. So now I, 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 I just uh, imagine that you know the institutionalized freedom that we've had can't deal with this institution, an institutionalized freedom that the public is 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 practicing. So uh, perhaps this is why, uh, in order to deal with this uh, situation. You know, certain institutions want to control the public and they'll use all means possible censorship, violence, etc. Do you have anything to add? Yes, I would uh, certainly uh, agree with my colleague, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, Keith here, especially when he makes the point that policy is always lagging behind. Uh, and we have seen this in the arena of um, uh, internet uh, freedom and new media technologies that it's only now that uh, organizations are beginning to offer a response to what's happening um, in the tech sphere uh, and in relation to freedom of expression in cyberspace. Um, a few years ago we were talking about how uh, mainstream newspapers, radio stations and television stations should start opening Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts and the like. This was already happening. Uh, a lot of citizens, and uh, uh, may I throw in a term which uh, was called or is still called citizen journalism, when uh, this was the phenomenon or the exercise of citizens who, uh, performing what would be called uh, journalistic duties. But this was, as Key says, sort of institutionalized. Should we then have called this citizen journalism to begin with at all? That's uh, a whole different debate. But citizens have become content uh, producers. They have become publishers in their own right, as you rightly mentioned in your uh, introduction, that uh, these technologies offer cheaper platforms, it's timely, and the access is um, fairly easy. If I was to open a newspaper today, it would take me a very long time, and I would need a lot of money to uh, set up that newspaper. Nowadays, I really do not need that. All I need is access to the internet and the right kind of tools, and I'm now a publisher. So this is the kind of scenario which we are dealing with, and there's still a lot of um, misunderstandings, if I may say, because we do not know. We've never been in this position before. So this is something that's happening um, as, we, as we are going along, and this is why, as MISA, we are insisting on a multi-stakeholder approach to sort of coming up with uh, a, a, a response or a framework, uh, as it were, that would allow us to negotiate and uh, confront some of the challenges that are coming out uh, as a result of um, uh, technology. Okay, gentlemen, there are, in case you've just joined us, you're listening to Face the Media, and the topic of discussion this morning is uh, online media publications and ethics. Now, you put it correct that now the, uh, the issue of journalism has gone beyond 
and this is regarding online publication. It is gone. It has gone beyond uh, just. It is gone now to uh, to the citizens themse the, uh, themselves that are not trained and not have ethics that I attend uh, from college. Now, if that is uh, the case, how do we handle the issue of ethics? How do we handle the issue? Of um, maybe Sarah. Um, thank you so much, and uh, good morning, listeners. Um, I would, I would, um, I'm going to build my thoughts on, I think, what uh, Keith said, what my colleague from um, MITS had said, and I think what I found uh, Mr. Kunda um, uh, laboring on the floor. Um, I want to submit that the institutions that we have in the country, especially um, those concerned with media issues, uh, ZAMEC, MISA, um, may not have the regulatory mandate uh, to regulate um, media practices in the in the country uh, including uh, online publications uh, but I think what the Zambian people would want to ask for and uh, what citizens like myself would want to ask for is that they cannot run away from a moral duty the same moral duty that gets them up, um, compels them to condemn when a journalist is victimized should be the same moral duty that should compel them to condemn when um, an ordinary citizen, a member of the public, or even a public um, servant is victimized. And we know that this is just pure malice. This, this, this is there are certain ethics that, that just need to come into play. Otherwise, before we know it, um, we are going to have a confused child we call the media. You know, we're going to have a media with so many heads. It's, it's going to be um, uh, this, this, this dinosaur that um, nobody, nobody would want to relate to. So there's, I agree that MISA is not uh, a regulatory uh, body, but I would want to still insist that MISA is, is a stakeholder. And uh, as a stakeholder, I think that one of the reasons why people have uh, called on MISA to take certain decisions, and why people would call on ZAMEC to take certain decisions, is number one, because of the reputation that uh, would want to hold MISA in. You know, uh, we expect that, that uh, on certain matters, much as I may not carry out punitive measures against an online publication like the watchdog but we expect that um misa will be in the forefront to bring issues into perspective when the media fraternity is derailing um zamek misa and other concerned stakeholders should step up and say the media fraternity is this these are our ethics these are our values because much as you've got the right as a journalist to uh, write about Sunday Chanda, you also have a duty and a responsibility to ensure that you don't defame me. Now, when you defame me, I must have recourse before the courts of law to um, bring you and to take an action against, against your institution. Now, the challenge, and I think this is what um, Keith was, uh, was, was laboring here, that we, we have uh, the internet uh, media publications that have gone viral, and most of them are faceless. So if I am defamed, and uh, to strike a balance, we have rights that the journalists must, must enjoy, <coughs> that media houses must enjoy, but on the other side, we have society that the moment you injure society as a whole, or the moment you injure a member of society, that member of society should have the right to go before the courts of law and uh, claim for damages because they have been defamed. Now, when that does not happen, then the balance is not done. And I think this is where we've been trying to place um, uh, this moral call on MISA, on ZAMEC, that bring back this derailing train on course. Now, you see, if you have uh, a country where you can insult your president, whether you like him or not, you may not like how he talks, how he looks, and whatever it is, the president is an institution, and these are institutions that will outlive <coughs> individuals that are occupying them today. We want this to still remain strong institutions. If you have issues 
raise those issues, but raise them in the context that they are accurate. Of course, it's, it's possible to error, but it's, it's one thing to uh, pedal uh, malicious stories, etc. So my, I, I wanted just to come to that, that it's very, very important that um, much as we may not have bodies uh, that, that would be regulatory in that sense, it's very important that from a moral perspective, uh, bodies like MISA, bodies like ZAMEC have a duty to protect society from um, indiscriminate defamation. Okay. You know, and so this is very important. And, and I think maybe to build on Keith's uh, thought, um, I think we've had mass communications where I think uh, the, the old school was uh, here's one person communicating to the masses. But I think with all these dynamics, so we, we can have so many people communicating to so many people at a go. You can have one person communicating to so many people, and you can have so many people communicating to, to one person. Um, and I think these are the challenges. And of course, navigating the technological uh, era and uh, the challenges that that will bring um, will be very challenging. But it's very important that I think um, bodies like MISA, when we say what we send, when we call them to take certain actions, because we think this is a stakeholder and where else can we run for in okay. terms of help? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tender. Before I ask uh, Mr. Kawati to, uh, to react, you, you, you mentioned a very good uh, uh, statement where you said the president is an institution. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned it. When you yes. say the president is an institution, yes. you're simply saying he is an institution and there's no private to an institution. No, you, you see, agree? you see, there's, there's, there's not privacy to an institution, but there's also what you want to um, uh, give as, as uh, respect to an institution. Now, okay, let's the, take aside insults. Let's take aside insults. Uh, but let's look let at me the, let me lay this case. There's privacy to an. You're not going to to bag into the president's bedroom because um, you think he's a public figure, so he has, he has no right to privacy. Yes, oh, he yes. still has right to privacy. So boundaries are going to be there. You know, you are, you are not going to trade his, his private issues into, into the public space. Privacy will be there. That's most of the reason why. If you defame a person like Sandy Chanda, the only thing that is going to happen is that Sandy can just go to the courts and um, uh, press for damages. If you defame a president, um, it's, it's, it's a criminal matter. So this is, this is where the institution comes in. And it's not about, about a person. It's an institution, and I think that we must be a country. Let's, let's migrate to a level where we, we can have regard for institutions. Okay, Sandy, can I, yeah. can, okay. can I just share some thoughts with please you? Do, please night? do. You see, the problem that we've had with this debate about uh, ethics or lack of ethics mm -hmm. in this country is that, uh, you know, there are just debates out there. Mm -hmm. But the reason why ZAMIC was formed is it was for the purpose of formalizing Mm -hmm. These complaints. Mm -hmm. I do not think that anyone, not even me, you know, has the authority to simply look at the story and say, ah, okay, this is unethical. Oh, this is malicious. Mm -hmm. The story is not unethical, is not malicious until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you prove it? Mm -hmm. You prove it by saying to the country that uh, we are selling to you as a country a self regulatory mechanism as good for democracy. And the country buys into that and says, okay, fine, go ahead and set up the self-regulatory mechanism. And it is set up. So once it is set up, it is then up to those people that feel aggrieved to formalize their grievances, place them before this body that has a set of tools that they use to arrive at uh, a conclusion as to whether this is uh, malicious let or me, not. Let me now, what has happened in this that. country, what has happened Sunday in this country mm. is this that just because a story talks about uh, the private affairs of a minister or a president from the perspective of the establishment, that is malicious. No, 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 no. And uh, that's, that, uh, that's uh, not and that even what... No, 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 no. And in fact, if, you if you read today's story, if you read, if you, if you read today's story where the vice president, uh, in the context where he's talking about going to North Korea, he does talk, he does describe the watchdog content as hate speech. Now, the problem I have with, uh, with, with that labeling is that uh, you must have a formalized institution you know that is mandated and qualified to label something hate speech yeah. now, not individual not, let's, not let's, individual let's not this, be, is a, this is where the problem is no 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 I think that let's, let's not pretend that we are not living on earth I don't need the courts to interpret an insult for me before I can know it's an insult 
Yeah, but that is where I have now, a problem. <laughs> now you see, it's 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 defamation has been defined. The moment that you utter any remark that is malicious, and it, it doesn't. You see, if you talk about um, uh, Sunday is a is a is a uh, a womanizer. Hey, oh, you is a womanizer. I'm not whatever. saying you are. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, I, I don't care if 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 if, if, if I was. But you see, if that's a choice that I have made, and you make that assertion, you must avail yourself, you must be ready to go and prove your story before the courts of law. Now, don't hide in being a faceless institution, because you have written about me, and if I think what you've written about me is malicious, I, I want to take action against you before the courts of law to go and adjudicate, as Mr. Kunda is, uh, is, is, uh, is, 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 is exactly, you, Mr. Mr. Kunda, sorry. Um, you must be readily available to be drawn before the courts of law. But you must be, you, you, you don't exist in some cloud where I cannot access, access you. You can write about me, <laughs> but if I'm aggrieved, I can't drag you if, to court. If I may intervene, I think, I think the problem that we have here is that we think we are still operating on Earth. We are not. We are operating on Earth and in cyberspace. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect uh, the same institutional frameworks that were functioning under the old uh, Earth system to still operate in cyberspace. But values That's not going to values. be the case. Yeah, values can remain values. Ethics you can remain ethics. You can still have recourse before the law. Mm -hmm. You can still have the right to reply. In fact, mm -hmm. most of these online publications have a comment space mm -hmm. where you can actually respond to what they are saying and interject. If I may finish. Mm -hmm. I think recourse before the law is there, mm -hmm. but I think the problem that we have is expecting to enforce the same old laws in cyberspace mm -hmm. that no, we've been enforcing you. on the media. I understand you, know. you very well. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and really, just to put things into perspective, mm -hmm. if you look at the genesis of media in mm -hmm. Zambia, I mean, we started off with radio. People couldn't respond. Things were just being handed down to them. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, TV, which was behaving the same way. Now we have radio where you can actually call in and, and, and have your voice heard. But with the Internet, things have changed. Mm -hmm. And you don't expect to enforce the same kind of uh, I, dinosaur era I totally uh, rules agree. No, over see, citizens. I totally uh, maybe agree. Be before you come in, I think let's... Let me just react <laughs> briefly. What is important, and I agree with the cyberspace and the earth issues, etc. For me, I think what is important is that even if, even if you are operating in cyberspace or you are operating on earth, when you write something that is malicious and damaging <coughs> about an individual... Go to court. Uh, l l let's go to court. But I want to know where to find you. Simple. I want to know where to find you. Can I give you an idea as to what you need to do in this? I case? want to know where to okay, find you. I a catch-22 there. Okay, and, and I'm not no, no, okay. yes, that I'm going to no, no, no. start. Let me I want give you an idea. Okay, let me give you an idea what you ought to do. First, 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 let's accept this one fact. And this one fact is that, uh, you know, people sometimes might have legitimate reasons as to why they just want to, to operate entirely in cyberspace. And they do not want to be seen. Yeah. They, 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 they just, they just, they, let me finish the point. Sometimes people will have legitimate reasons. The history of not only this country, but the history of the world is such that governments have not been very comfortable no, no. With, mm. cri with the criticism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They haven't, true, they, they true, haven't been very, very comfortable true. with uh, those uh, reports or news items that they are uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. true, true. And as a result, they have resorted to the temptation to yeah. misuse institutions of the state yeah. to get at people, sometimes yeah. throw them behind bars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even when in the final analysis this person, you know, is found not guilty, there's no compensation mm -hmm. of the lost uh, years yeah. and reputation yes. that has mm -hmm. been damaged. So sometimes there's that legitimate reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this country, there are journalists that have legitimate fears of being out there in the open. Yeah. And there are some journalists that are actually have sought political asylum in this very country. Mm -hmm. But our political leadership... But no one has our politi right to insult. No, but you yeah. see, but that is where I have a problem, I'm... Sunday. The problem that I have, mm -hmm. the problem that I have here is mm -hmm. that just because I have been insulted does mm -hmm. not make me an authority on defining what constitutes an insult. Mr. Kaunda, what I'm, what I'm So in for... the absence of a, taking a person 
to a court of law. My, in, the, in the absence of physically getting that person and locating them, my advice is this. Just ask yourself, you know, what damage is a story about my womanizing as a politician? going? Because most of the stories that are actually that are written mm -hmm. uh, on Watchdog, if you analyze the content, it has nothing to do with national security. It actually has to do with the persons now, or the people it. holding office. May, may, may I just, okay, before uh, you, you, you come in there, I think uh, this, uh, you both have uh, what I might term uh, legitimate uh, points. If we are talking about cyberspace, then we need to look at the characteristics of the Internet. Okay, what is the Internet designed to do? What can it do? What can it not do? The issue of anonymity, which uh, is raised by my colleague here, is a very, very important point. Um, uh, because we have noticed that in several of the countries, and this is not just in Zambia okay. alone, the point that he makes that uh, states or governments are not very comfortable with criticism and would want to uh, stifle uh, that freedom of expression and the like. The internet becomes an alternative. The reason why, we have to ask ourselves as well, why is there so much following of certain uh, websites? You know, It may point to the fact that within the earth space, if I may <coughs> term it that, mm -hmm. there is, um, people are not simply pleased with the content they're receiving from radio stations, from televisions, from newspapers, mm -hmm. right? And they're simply looking for alternative mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. which meets their needs. So that also needs to be um, uh, brought to the fore. In several of the countries uh, within SADC as well, we've noticed that there is incremental weakening of institutions mm -hmm. um, that then do not support uh, freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you have a compromised judiciary, mm -hmm. any journalist who appears before that judiciary mm -hmm. or before those judges be is to death. exactly, oh. mm -hmm. you know. So all this needs to go in hand in hand um, with. Uh, a certain um, support mm -hmm. of institutions, which is why, as Misa, we have taken um, uh, that position to say we will support uh, frameworks that advance our self regulatory mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And we've opened ourselves mm -hmm. uh, to say, okay, all the stakeholders who want to be part of these processes of uh, preserving ethics or promoting <coughs> ethical conduct. Uh, in the mainstream uh, press, please mm -hmm. come and assist us in developing a mechanism that can decisively deal with the issues that you raise, mm -hmm. uh, insults, uh, defamation, yeah. mm -hmm. and the like. At the same time, we're also aware that uh, those who are in power are prone to abuse that mm -hmm. power and would want to use some of these laws mm -hmm. uh, to clamp down on journalists, to clamp down on freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. and. Also note that a lot of the laws that we still use are coming from a colonial mm -hmm. era period mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where these were instituted because of uh, very specific mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, ideas around constraining uh, the expression of oppressed people and the like. So you have to have a holistic uh, outlook mm -hmm. of... Uh, how all these things uh, play themselves out. The issue of process is very important. Mm -hmm. You feel defamed or you feel insulted, you can then not take that very same law mm -hmm. into your own hands and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to beat up this journalist mm -hmm. because you have written uh, malicious stories about me. So we are saying you go to the courts. Uh, uh, to the courts. Mm -hmm. You go, before you even go to the courts, we are trying to build credible mm -hmm. uh, institutions that have integrity, that can decisively deal with the issues uh, that you're raising here. because. Mm -hmm. And uh, the media are not enemies um, mm -hmm. of the people. They're not enemies uh, of the state even. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to just secure an environment that allows citizens to talk to each other, that allows citizens mm -hmm. uh, to have uh, dialogue, to build a national discourse and that, that can help important. advance uh, <laughs> certain uh, aspirations and hopes of the people. And that is, and I agree. You know, I mean, I, I am strongly opposed to a government that is going to stifle the rights of the media. I'm against a government that is going to uh, silence the media, but again, I'm against a media that is going to injure society or that is going to injure members of society indiscriminately. I think that <coughs> what I'm advocating for is this balance. Now, if we are going to have institutions uh, that will be credible enough, those institutions must be trusted by the media fraternity, but more so those institutions must be trusted by society and members of society. It's this balance that becomes very, very important in building this credibility that we're talking about. Mr. Kaunda was uh, very elaborate. You, I mean, uh, and I understand there'll be a lot of reasons why certain media institutions would, would uh, le legitimate reasons why they would uh, operate um, in space. 
uh, legitimate reasons. But none of us have any legitimate reason to insult any other person, for instance. And I think this is the angle. It's just one angle, but okay. it's one of the angles that is very okay, important me, me, to, to, to this matter. Insults, uh, insults so aside. So insults aside. Okay, insults aside. Let me ask you one question. Let Please. me ask you one question. Um, is it wrong for, for a journalist or anyone maybe from an online uh, media publication mm -hmm. to write about the background of a person that has become a member of parliament no, it's not or wrong. is a president? No, it's not wrong. You see, it's not is wrong. it wrong for a journalist to reveal a criminal record it's not of wrong. a person it's, in public? It's, it's a right. You see, the, 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 and, and get my point. Mm. When, when you talk about defamation, defamation is when you do something malicious and something that you cannot prove. So if you write something about someone's background, right, and those people feel that you've misrepresented their facts, the balance comes in that uh, they should, you should be able to go into court and prove your story. But there's nothing wrong with you writing about uh, my background or uh, my, some criminal record somewhere or stuff like that. There's nothing wrong for as long as you can substantiate your story. Okay. And this is, this, is the, this is the moral gist <coughs> of my argument. Okay, so we're almost coming to uh, uh, of our presentation so that we can open up our course case. Uh, okay, I think it's important to enforce the idea that insults is just semantics until proven by the courts of law and institutions which is specifically created to define what an insult but is. Insult but if you, I, you know it's an insult even before you go to court. No, <laughs> it depends on the on the context. But let me aside. let me go. Insults aside. aside, I think I think it's also important. Uh, my my colleague Kelly is here, brought a very important issue. Why is it that these institutions are operating in cyberspace? It's also very important to understand why. Mm -hmm. We're living in a culture where freedom of expression is not very welcome by uh, the institutions that govern us. I'll give you an example. Uh, there are so many journalist friends of mine who are on the street simply because they wrote something that either their editor or the state was not happy with. Mm -hmm. so, so they lost their jobs. And and now they're, on, now they're on the street. Yeah. And there's so many journalists mm -hmm. who have been edited out of the mainstream publications, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. And what do you do with all these journalists who feel that they have a right to, to, to write, mm -hmm. who feel that they, they have a right to make fair comment on what is happening within their society, mm -hmm. who feel that authority should be accountable to its citizens? These journalists are writing online. Mm -hmm. And do you think these institutions are happy that these journalists still have a voice? Of course not. They want to shut even their online voice down. Mm -hmm. So now, if you're going to entertain the notion that authorities can shut down everyone who is uh, practicing their trade... I'm not even supporting that. Yeah. I'm the, going the, for a balance. What we need is balance. Well, we the, ba the balance is there in the right to reply. There are so many it's mechanisms. Okay? And, and, and please, my, by the way, if you've noticed on these online publications, perhaps 80% of the content on those publications online is people commenting. So somehow, w w in society, there is a need to let out the pressure. And these You're institutions online are providing that space, which, w w which, which has been created by the intimidation within the, the is, physical it, space. Is, I want you to no, be cut this. Keith. This is Keith. 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 Sorry, sorry. Mr. I mean, Mr. Mr. Chan. I've followed this media <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if, if we are going to be candid enough, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's be agreed. Let's be very agreed that we this this balance is critical and even when you talk about uh, the right to response etc it's you see the, there are certain online publications that the moment you blog and it's something that is uh, that they don't want to see it will be your your your, st your statement or whatever is where it's awaiting whatever and it will never appear so even even the blogging itself what they admit on the bloggers column is also edited then start your blog Okay, let's. Uh, but I mean, how many <laughs> blogs are you? You're going to have 15 million blogs. There's in this no country. problem. Let's get to There's Mr. No problem with so let's see what they mean. Okay. But I mean, that's what, that's what okay. the argument is. The argument is that can we have Mr. ethics? Mr. Can we have values? Through the moderator. Very important. Through the moderator. Uh, let's, let, let's give uh, Mr. Kawat from the secret, uh, Secretariat a chance, I think. What has been the case in uh, these other countries in the SADC region? Absolutely. I just wanted to mention uh, that as well, that within SADC, we've had journalists, most recently in Tanzania, two journalists killed. Um, in what is strongly uh, linked uh, to their work. The other journalist was, uh, had, had a tear gas canister blown into his stomach whilst covering a demonstration uh, by police in full view of um, 
uh, of people. So these are the risks that exist. These are the risks that are confronted day by day by journalists uh, out there and within uh, the region. So that voice Kiss was talking about, that if there is a need to then take that voice, when you feel that said, uh, you're being constrained, you have an alternative online that you can um, then share your views uh, with um, uh, a, a, a lot more people. Now, our position is that if we are to, because this is something that's new, and I'm sure we all agree that this is something that is very new to us, we must ask ourselves, what are principles of freedom of expression consistent with the democracy that we preach? And if we agree on those principles to say this is freedom of expression, and if I'm uh, advancing the notion of freedom of expression here, I'm not saying... This, uh, the freedom of expression right is absolute, uh, that it's not subordinate to uh, other rights as well. That's not what we are saying. Um, um, rights have got their own limitations. But if we are to make mistakes, if we are to err on uh, these matters of internet freedom, then let's err on the side of protecting freedom because you cannot fully trust those in power. You cannot fully trust the state to act consistent um, with uh, the notions of uh, um, uh, citizens' uh, freedom. Um, the last thing uh, that I'd want to put across uh, as well here is you mentioned that we might possibly end up with 13 million blogs. I think ideally that's the situation which would um, yeah, work quite, quite well possible. because the answer to uh, the insults or the defamation that you're talking about is just more speech. Um, mm. the other, uh, to, uh, to hate speech is more, uh, speech. more, more speech, as uh, somebody famously said. So we really need to interrogate uh, this space and we really need also to be uh, honest with ourselves with, uh, in saying what exactly do we want. But the moment we start shutting down voices, the moment we start blocking websites, the moment we start taking um, people offline, then we're sort of building a precedence that might not actually, in the longer run, advance uh, certain freedom, uh, uh, certain freedoms, and yeah. also advance uh, development, because studies have been done that show that uh, it, there's a correlation between freedom of the internet and uh, development as well. And we're also aware that even your Facebooks, your Googles, receive uh, what are called takedown requests from uh, governments. Sometimes they act accordingly, sometimes they do not. And our um, continuous uh, voice to uh, those institutions is to say, try as much as possible to protect uh, people's freedoms. Because what you don't want to end up with is somebody deciding what you can wake up and read in the morning, what you can say and what you cannot say. Can I make a very quick uh, addition to that, Ruth? And the quick addition I want to make to this is that the reason why you know, the, the, the reason why media associations worldwide are now you know, promoting these self-regulatory mechanisms is because of the delicate nature of democracy. You nurture democracy by allowing dialogue. That is the oxygen mm -hmm. of democracy. And the reason why also you want self-regulatory mechanisms is because you do not want to encourage people to be going to courts of law. Because courts of law are not that user-friendly. Mm -hmm. They have a tendency of, uh, you know, dampening the spirit of, uh, of democracy in, in dialogue. You know? <laughs> that's what, uh, that's what, uh, that's what uh, democracy is all, is all about. You know, but then if you insist that uh, you know whatever mistake is made, whatever whatever feeling that you have, you've been aggrieved, you always want to go to to a court of law. You know, there's a very high possibility that at some point, uh, you know, people will just be quiet. And another problem of people being quiet, and I'm not very comfortable being in, comp in a company of people that uh, that are, are quiet most of the time. That's because you know they might just be you know, some arsenal that is building up and some, at yeah. some point, yeah. they're just going to blow up like a nuclear facility. So you, you want your oxygen, you, you know, want, you, you want your democracy, you, want to you know. In hell and exile, in hell and exile. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. see, even when you yawn and when you exile, see, exile and yawn responsibly. Ten seconds, ten seconds ten, before ten, we... Ten seconds, break. I, I think I'll just say one thing. It's important that you allow people to thrive online because the rest of the world is thriving there. Do you want a citizenry that is feeling afraid to even express themselves online? Look, it's a big space. We need to colonize it. Let's put our content there. Already Zambia is receiving information like it's a waterfall from everywhere else. Where's our content going there? And, we uh, have to put it there. Let's agree. innovate. Let's create. And 10 seconds agree that in 10 seconds it's very important that we crowd this space. But I think let's also, let's also not leave behind our values and our ethics. 
It's very, very important. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, gentlemen, I think we'll break up for a commission. And when we come back, we'll open up our lines. The number to call is 2292622. 229262 or you can call us on 226841 226841 so a great scrapping or blocking is not a solution then what is a solution from the land of the rising sun Kumawa to the Barotsi plains of Kwahai, up to the Copper Belt, across the land of lakes, Kuchivana, into the deep, deep blue waters of Lake Tanganyika, down from the Kaleni Hills, into the heart of the nation, Lusaka, all the way to the water that thunders, Mosio Tunya. Everyone wants it. We all want it. Related media is more effective in collecting and disseminating information. This is because self-regulation enables the media to work freely. The self-regulation uh, is a much better approach because it, it, you know, it removes the possibility of government interference in the media. Obviously, that's a serious threat to freedom of expression. That is why Misa Zambia is committed to the quest for self-regulation of the media. Join us and support media self-regulation to promote good governance and democracy. Misa Zambia, promoting media freedom in Zambia. Okay, we are back. This is Face the Media, and the topic of discussion this morning is online media publications and ethics. And I'm about to call is 229262. Send have a call on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello, madam. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Your name and where are you calling us from? Thank you very much. This is Mike. I'm calling you from within Zambia. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Yes, and good morning, panel. I've observed you have a distinguished uh, gentleman in the studio. Yes. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, Mike, I've been actually very much perturbed about what is happening in our media in Zambia. Uh, am I clear, madam? Yes, we're clear. We can hear you. Uh, uh, we, we, we have two extreme sides of voting um, in this country, and at the end of the day, it is people like us who are consuming this who are at a loss. We are not being informed adequately and accurately because uh, much of the reporting that is there is tinted with uh, political inclination and political interests. So there are two extreme sides of reporting in this country. There are some who are supporting the government. Whatever the government does, it needs to be supported. Even if it's wrong, if they have done something wrong, they have to cover it and... I mean, I, I don't know really where, I mean, where, I mean, where we are going in this country. So then we have got to the extreme side, like the online publication, where everything is negative. When you are reading the watchdog, you will be thinking that Mike Wasata is in a casket. I mean, well, that is why it's very difficult for us to sympathize with the arrest of this journalist. Because you're not going to call it journalism when you are insulting the head of state. You are, you are getting what I'm saying. I mean, when you read, I mean, when you read the, the Zambian watchdog from the comments, from whatever. I mean, let me put it very clearly that I am a great supporter of people's right of expression. You have seen even Julian Assange, uh, Edward Snowden. These people are not saying Barack Obama is this, is black, is white. No, no, no. I mean, there's a difference. Michael Sata is a is a constitutionally elected president of this republic. Therefore, you must be able to respect his persona. You can, you can condemn in whatever term you want, his policies and whatever he says, this and that. But not clearly going outright on somebody's personality. I think that that's not a society really, that we are, we, we, we are looking for. So that's why you are finding that we are very hesitant in supporting these journalists who have been arrested, who are rotting in these prisons. Because you are not going to call it yourself. It is the people of Zambia who decide to put these people in office. Michael has been direct himself. It is the people of Zambia, and it is the people of Zambia who are going to remove him from that office. It is from the bedroom. When people start feeding the prices of cement, which is reaching 200, you know what? People themselves, when they go to the barracks, room, they say, no, now I should start to work for me. Not for you to start insulting the head of state. This is insults that are there. 
When you are reading the paper, it's so negative. You would think that somebody is in a casket, someone has died. But how can someone who is dying be addressing rallies in, in where you saw him on the, on the place? So I think that really, but on the other side, the job they are doing is very good. They are very investigative, online publication. They are investigating and they are informing people adequately. For instance, we are being told that there is a heavy investment in people tapping people's phones to the extent that security kind of arrangement of the nation has been compromised. We have heard the people are being tapping phones, internet, everything is tapping, invading in people's privacy, you are using your phone, talking to your girlfriends, making somebody's listening. Mark, can you wind up so you can allow another call? 229262 is the number to call. 229262 is the number to call. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Radio Phoenix. Yes, you're through to First Media. Your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, this is uh, Peter Namakoro. Peter, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kelly's Kaunda. Good morning, Mr. Namako. Uh, we are fine. Well, I just wanted to say uh, you're yeah, spot on, actually, with uh, your contribution. Uh, I like the way you are bringing out those points. You know, one thing I've just noticed is that in Zambia, people pretend, you know, they they want to bring out their personal agendas and uh, try to live an artificial life. Whatever you're talking about, he has very spot on your colleague on the other side is I think the lost cause. He's not representing any I think he's just representing himself and I to the to the moderator, please try to bring more serious people in, on stage like Kelly's count and the others. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Two two nine two six two is the number to call. Two two nine two six two is the number to call. Two two six eight four one is the other number that you can call. Do you want to react? To our first caller, the second caller. He didn't mention anything. No, we seem to have a, <laughs> we seem to have a caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. This is Auntie Dorothy. I'm calling from Osaka. Yes, Dorothy, go ahead. Yes, actually, you know, it, it's very disturbing when you hear people saying that we should not have blogs in this nation. We need as million and million as possible because we are living in a generation which has to be informed. We are tired of living in a place whereby, like, we are bushmen, you know. We want to be informed. When you go to Uganda, Mr. President Museveni has been sitting down on people because people have been informing the nation what is going on. What happened to him? His only intelligence, the person he trusted, he ran away. He took his family six months away. He told the press to now report publicly what he, he didn't like for the government. This is the reporting we want. Zambia is very late. We want to be told the truth. We, we are tired of people who support even things when they are wrong. When they are correct, let the reporters talk the truth. And, you know, the reporters also, you, people, you don't go around to find out of the economy what is going on. The street vending, the people who are affected. You are not going. It's like you are just reporting on politicians. Are the only politicians living in this nation. Be informed. Go around and find out how are the people faring in this nation. Are they happy or not happy? Because people are, are, are scared. Even here at Kamala, you can't talk. People are scared because bad cutters will pounce on you and, and kill you and everything will be done. That's not the Zambia we need to live. You reporters, you have to do a great thing. Let's not support for the sake of support. When something is right, let's support it. But there are so many wrong things that we are seeing in this nation. Thank you. We need more blogs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dorothy. So I think I was making a mistake on the number. I was mentioning 226292. 226292 is the number to call. We seem to be a caller on the line. Hello. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. First the media. Hello? Your name and where are yes. you calling us from? Thanks. So this is Derek. I'm calling from Zen Osaka. Derek, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, good morning, panel. Good morning, good morning Derek. Derek. Yes, yeah, thanks, uh, Kelly and the other gentlemen. I uh, must say that you're stating issues so well, and that's what we need. Uh, you know, it's a, I think Zambians, uh, we, this issue of cyber, I think it seems to be very, it's, it's a new phenomenon. Uh, yes, uh, embracing it actually, it's, it's being segmented. On the other side, you hear the government talking about, uh, how important it is for people to have uh, computer skills. And there are things, these things being done like uh, in Kenya, Uganda, where they are encouraging him to, to uh, being given a laptop to know these things at an early stage. So
So we are mo- we should understand that we are moving into these things at a very serious pace because uh, Zambia is part of the global village, and uh, the news uh, inevitably has to come through for people to know what is going on. So uh, the issue of infants that are being talked about, here, you know, I don't know. People are not living in reality. Uh, these print media, I will cite, for example, the, the post. Uh, where before our president came into power, you and me do know very well, let's see, we are not in Zambia then, that uh, the person who, the people who actually talked ill uh, or would say insulted Sata, it's, uh, it's the, the post newspaper. And uh, barely a few years ago, uh, Zambians have forgotten, and uh, these things that are coming up, you know, when you read, uh, read Watch Talk, they. <clears throat> sometimes they would just quote what somebody had written, and uh, probably people would say that is an insult or not, but uh, these are the realities that are there. So I think the issue of trying to cage the online media, it will not help us. If anything, we should encourage people to go into that area. What is important is... Thank you so much. Two two six two nine two 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 six two nine two is the number to call or you can call us on two three six seven nine zero two three six seven nine zero the other number to use is two two six eight four one as we wait for our caller we want to react I, yes uh many thanks to the callers and i think they're all raising uh, very pertinent points i just want to insist uh, that as misa we are pushing for a multi-stakeholder approach to the issues of uh, online publishing. One thing is clear, this is not going to be reversed. You can close down the watchdog today, another watchdog will come out tomorrow. You close it tomorrow, on the other day there will be another watchdog, or indeed any other different um, publication. So the online trend is not going to be uh, reversed, and that is clear. But our position then is this, we need to have a multi-stakeholder approach, we need to shape these things together. One of the things that we have done most recently is to conduct research on how people are using these online tools, how people understand issues of security, of surveillance. One of the callers was talking about communications uh, surveillance, which you know the state has power to do. As we speak right now, you know, who, no, no, who really knows you know, who has their phone uh, bugged or not. So all, all those things and all those those elements form part of uh, freedom of expression within cyberspace. So we have uh, communities that we need to reach out to. The media themselves, yes, the bloggers' um, cases here, um, institutions like Zikta, for instance, need to be uh, engaged. Uh, telecom operators, your MTNs, your Airtels, all uh, ha- have a role to play in uh, guaranteeing uh, freedom of expression. Academic institutions, who, who I'm not too sure who who is teaching online media ethics at the moment in Zambia or indeed within the region. It's probably a few universities, um, if you are lucky. So that issue also needs to f- enter the academic sphere and be thoroughly interrogated so that we can form, formulate positions that are quite clear and articulate and satisfy those principles of freedom of expression. Then lastly, civil society, of course, have got a role to play as well because they are the li- uh, they form the largest part of people, especially the human rights defenders who are always in confrontation or are most likely to come in confrontation with the state. So their security also matters and they also need to understand how they can also take their activism online. And very quickly, do you you know are you you know do you know that actually the the language that is now being termed as insulting that you find uh, in a you know in a in a watchdog in particular uh, is to a large extent actually a reflection of the language that is normally used by our politicians in this country. You know, if you were to examine the language that is employed by our politicians on public rallies, especially that now Zambia is in an election mode ever since uh, the last elections because you have an average one, uh, one by election every week. If you listen to the language that is employed by our politicians, you even wonder whether anyone has even the moral right to label what is on the watchdog <laughs> as, an insul- as, as insulting. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at a loss to really understand that. You know, not justifying bad language, but believe you me, what you see reflected in the media is a reflection to a large extent of the language that is employed by our political leaders. Well, thanks so much, Mr. Kamadman. We'll get our last uh, three callers. 
Hello, good morning. Good morning, uh, Pane. Yes, you're through to face the media. Your name and where you're calling us from? My name is Mumba. Uh, first and foremost, I think you've opened up the lines and give chance to the callers not to talk too much. And yet uh, people are holding on. And this is uh, uh, money going. Uh, coming to the point that there is nothing wrong with uh, the cyberspace, as, as you call it, but uh, what is wrong is really the insults. I want to agree with uh, Abu Pechanda that uh, I think we, as Zambians, we have lost it. Values. If you come from a home which is well respected, how would you feel to insult your own parents? His Excellency the President, he is our parent, he is elected, and he's a president for all Zambians. The statement, the way you so-called journalists, and I don't know which school you come from, airing president, as if somebody is next to the graveyard. Somebody who is your head of state, you continue insulting, no respect, and you call that has moral right as a journalist, come on, have morals, have values. We are Africans, later on Zambians. We have one Zambia, and this is the only country we have. We are not going to allow our leaders being insulted in the name of the cyberspace, in the name of democracy, and you call that democracy, and you come from homes, you uh, Kunda, and you call yourself Kunda, I don't know where you are Kunda, from where? You should have values. Don't bring this Eastern and Western uh, culture and you think you are so educated. In fact, you are just exposing yourself that you are one of the people that are perpetrating and also trying to encourage anarchy in this country. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Let's get our last two callers. <laughs> 226292 is the number to call. 226292 is uh, the number to call. We have a caller on the line. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, thank you. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, you are through to face the media. Your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, thank you very much. My name is Emmanuel Piri, former Patriotic Front, Lusaka Province Treasurer. Go ahead. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to register my disappointment the manner in which the presenters are taking too much time to to talk, you know, because earlier on when the program started, they were given an opportunity to say what they wanted to say. Then when you are calling in the uh, the callers to call in, it means you want you want to give us chance to participate in this program. This is a very important program. To me, I see that uh, the people who are contributing to online publications like Xander and Watchdog, they've lost it. Because, you see, what do you expect our children? What values are we giving to our children? What type of morals are we giving to our children? It's very unfortunate that eh, somebody can stand there and defend eh, what is going on. This is really un-Zambian. You cannot, you know, there's no way you can talk of a head of state as if somebody is next to a grave, as if somebody is unable to talk, or as if somebody is being fed from a, from a tube. You know, it's very unfortunate. You see, what kind of message are you sending out there? You see, our children are supposed to grow up as very responsible children. And I thought changing of culture should have started with people who, have, who are very good at using the pen, who, who, in this case, who are journalists. It's very unfortunate that we continue to perpetuate things which we really see that they are not okay, they are not helping anyone. Can the journalism fraternity please change this attitude? They are spoiling our children. What we are reading on the Zambian Watchdog is really, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Because you find that... We've run, we run out of time. Let's wind up. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, we've run out of time. Uh, I can see a signal here. Uh, we're going to react and uh, maybe our last remarks. Our last Start with Kiss, yes. Okay, there's been, there's been quite some very valuable uh, things said by the callers. Uh, but I think one of the main things that's coming out of uh, what uh, Dorothy said is that she feels afraid to even speak when she's at City Market because she thinks the cadres are going to lynch her because she, she, she said something against uh, the politicians. But uh, I think Zambians should rethink the mystique that they have 
around the politicians that govern them. Really, they are also as human as you are. You are the ones who elected them, and they are accountable to you. I mean, we've had uh, how many presidents now? Uh, since Kaunda, we've had five presidents. Presidents come and go. But their responsibility when they come is to spend your taxpayers' money so that they bring you development. There is nothing wrong with you asking them where they are spending that money. And there is nothing wrong with you airing your views wherever you are. Please, don't be afraid. Publish what you say, what you think. Yes, Mr. Chanda? Um, I think that there's no reason for anybody to be scared or to be induced uh, and uh, to be thrown into this um, you know, scenario where people cannot open their mouths. What is, what is very important, and I think our clarion call, is that there must be balance. Uh, there must be ethics, there must be balance, you know, um, there must be rights, responsibilities, there must be duties. And I think this, the, moment, the moment that we miss out on this balance, then we lose it as a society. Nobody would um, allege that uh, we elect angels or angelic beings to these public offices. Uh, but what is more very true is that um, uh, as a society, as human beings, the reason why we have uh, regulation, the reason why we have law, the reason why we've got courts, etc., etc., is because society um, must be regulated by law. And um, so if, if there are things that we do and uh, things that, that uh, border on what would infringe on other people's rights, and if you write a story and say that uh, Chanda is bowed headed, and you can substantiate that I'm bowed headed. There's no reason for me to cry foul. But if you're going to write that uh, uh, Chanda has got uh, two, uh, two uh, genitals or whatever it is, you must be able to prove that. <laughs> you must be able to prove that because if I take it as defamation, I must be able to drag you to some place where both of us is a fountain of justice. So, um, and let me make it very clear that I'm not against the watchdog per se. I think what I'm calling for is this balance, this, 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 this ability to uh, bring in ethics in this. If, if, you are, if, if, it's, if you're doing a, a true story, bring it out. But again, for those that would feel injured, and I know that uh, these, these, these are again are the uh, challenges with um, online um, and uh, the advent of uh, technology. The advent of uh, technology is that uh, it's very hard to bring everybody to, to book. And uh, I believe in the self-regulation, for instance. And self-regulation must, must also be carried out within the context and the framework of these, of these ethics. That, that we, when, when we report, you know, we can, we can be spot on uh, with truth and there's no malice, etc. Because we are writing about people, human beings. You know, we're not writing about stones, stones or uh, whatever with no feelings. So it's very, very important. For me, I think it's this balance. I know that... Um, uh, there, there are these concerns, and we have condemned the harassment of journalists. You know, um, I have got um, so many friends within the media fraternity, and uh, I, I know about some of the uh, people that uh, Keith was talking about who could be on the streets today, and we're saying that, you see, that is wrong. That is, that is very wrong. What is right is that let's have a society that is open enough but let's have a society that is also balanced. Uh, you have reporting on one side that is uh, factual, etc. But you also have society to care about. Remember, the media, the journalists also have a duty of care. You know, and this duty of care should be that um, uh, we, must, we must not lose the same society that we're trying to inform. It's very, very important. So our core is that uh, with the advent of online publications, what we need um, is um, uh, this balance, striking this. It, it doesn't matter who's uh, uh, perpetuating insults, whether it's a politician or it's a journalist. Uh, what is wrong is wrong. And um, let's not uh, embrace and accept things because this person is doing so. We can also do it, etc. What is wrong is wrong. And let's be courageous enough to point out those things. So... Um, uh, this this is our submission, and uh, going forward, and I think that uh, my, my colleague my colleague was spot on that. You see, you, you can't go on uh, closing things, but what is going to happen is when we self-regulate, let's have these ethics, values, etc., coming into the picture. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chandler, Mr. Kaunda. 
Um, one of the most important ethical requirements in interpersonal relations or in whatever we do as human beings is this cardinal rule, do unto others what you'd like uh, them to do unto you. And my appeal to uh, media practitioners, whether online or otherwise, is that uh, this platform has been able to provide you with reactions and sentiments of the public. So take them into account and take them seriously. And whatever story that you post online, just ask yourself this question. Is this something that I'd like to be done unto me? Is this something that I'd like to be done unto my father? Is this something that I'd like to be done unto my father, my children, and so on and so forth? Then the rules of fairness, you know, will then be able to apply in whatever we do. That is my closing remarks. Yes, Mr. Thank you. Uh, I'll reiterate that MISA is open to dialogue, uh, is open to engagement, and we would uh, really love to hear the views of uh, various sectors of society in Zambia and within the region on how we can move forward uh, in this. One last thing is that we still have a choice. When you wake up in the morning, you have a choice to buy the Times of Zambia, you have a choice to either buy the Post and whatever. You also have a choice not to, to log in. Uh, on the internet, so you choose what the kind of information you also want to expose yourself to. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. This has been uh, Face the Media. To the callers, really, I want to thank you so much for your contribution. Indeed, closing or blocking is not a solution because the online trend of technology has come to stay. We are calling, so MISA is now calling for a multi sector approach to try to look at how they can regulate the trend that is going on. And to those that were listening, I would love to thank you so much for listening. Until Thursday, next week, it's goodbye. Thank you for having joined us on Face the Media, a talk show program of Media Institute of Southern Africa, MISA Zambia Chapter. MISA is a dynamic, member-driven, regional organization with national chapters in all the SADC countries. MISA seeks to foster free, independent, and diverse media in the service of democracy and development. For comments and suggestions about the program, email broadcasting at misazambia.org.zm. MISA Zambia, promoting media freedom in Zambia.